while she did experience great success as one-third of popular R&B soul group Shalimar, due to a variety of internal and external issues, Jodi Watley chose to walk away from it all. That didn't mean she was done with her music career, though. Over the next several decades, she would develop her own award-winning signature sound, as well as become a fashion icon. Jodi Watley was born in Chicago, Illinois, to a radio evangelist father who hosted a daily gospel music show and a church choir singing mother. So it's no surprise that singing as well as dancing would end up being two things Jodi would express a talent for and devote a lot of time to honing. Her early music influences were Diana Ross, Marvin Gaye, Stevie Wonder, and Michael Jackson, just to name a few. Fun fact, her godfather is soul pioneer and family friend Jackie Wilson. Jodi even made her first stage appearance with him at eight years old. When she heard about a new musical variety TV show that had debuted in the early 70s called Soul Train, Jodi knew she had to get on it. As fate would have it, she would get to do just that in her early teens after her family moved to Los Angeles. As standouts on the show, Jodi and fellow Soul Train dancer Jeffrey Daniel, who she eventually began dating, were selected to join Gary Mumford and become original members of the R&B soul group Shalimar. Later on, a new lineup of Jody, Jeffrey, and Howard Hewitt would end up being the most successful. The trio released several albums and scored a lot of hits on both the pop and R&B charts, including Take That to the Bank, The Second Time Around, Make That Move, This Is For The Lover In You, and A Night To Remember. Over time though, conflicts among the members, disagreements about their artistic direction with executives, as well as financial woes with their label, led Jody to make the decision to leave the group in 1983, after a six-year run. In their unsung episode, Jody claimed that she and Howard had issues with one another right from the start. Also around this time, Jody and Jeffrey's dating relationship came to an end, and that factor probably contributed to some tension among the members as well. It's a good thing they did part ways though, as Jody revealed in a 2015 interview with iloveoldschoolmusic.com that she'd experienced physical and verbal abuse from Jeffrey during their relationship. Issues with their label also began to rear their ugly head as Soul Train booking agent and the group's co-creator Dick Griffey's lack of respect for Jody and Jeffrey grew. According to Jody, he'd always considered them as just dancers and really only there to back up his favorite member, Howard. Then there was the money issue. Naturally, after topping the charts, the tours, and being showered with love around the world, the trio expected their bank accounts to reflect the fruits of their labor. Unfortunately, that wasn't the case. As Jody was ending things with Shalimar, she was beginning a new chapter of her life as a mom, after giving birth to her daughter, Lauren. She made it clear in an interview with the LA Times a few years later that she didn't like to talk about either her or her father publicly. She didn't name any names in that interview, but he was later revealed to be Leon Silvers III, songwriter, producer, and member of the 70s family group, The Silvers. Post Shalimar and with Baby in tow, Jodi moved to Europe, dividing her time between London and Paris for almost three years. There, she officially released her first and second solo singles, Where the Boys Are and Girls' Night Out. They were only released in the UK, Europe, and Australia though, so as far as her American fans were concerned, Jody had just disappeared altogether from the music scene after leaving Shalimar. She knew she needed to head back to the US to really make a go of a solo career, so she headed back across the pond and secured a recording deal with MCA Records. From the moment Jody's self-titled debut solo album dropped in 1987, she was on her way. The project became an instant hit. It peaked at number 10 on the Billboard 200, number one on the R&B Hip Hop Albums chart, and eventually went platinum. The album produced five R&B singles in total that charted on the Hot 100, with three peaking within the top 10. Still a Thrill, Don't You Want Me, Some Kind of Lover, Most of All, and her first number one R&B and number one dance hit, Looking for a New Love. When Jody filmed the music video for Looking for a New Love, she made a conscious decision to use fashion to help her express her vision and would continue to do so in future projects. Over time, she not only became known for blending various aesthetics like vintage with custom and couture with street style, but also for opening the door for future black fashionistas. She even released a successful fitness video, was featured in many magazines, and was named one of the 50 most beautiful people of 1990 in People magazine. She told Ebony magazine, no black women were in fashion magazines. 
and the first time I did Harper's Bazaar, the label didn't want to send me to New York to do it because they didn't see what being in a fashion magazine had to do with selling records. I flew myself to New York to do Harper's Bazaar the first time I did it because I knew. At the 30th Annual Grammy Awards of 1988, Jodi was nominated for two awards, Best Female R&B Vocal Performance and Best New Artist. She won the latter. Now, I know what you're thinking, Best New Artist? But wasn't she already known as one third of a successful group for years? Well, she found a workaround. When she released her first two singles, they were done so under the name of Jodi, no last name. So it created a technicality of sorts allowing her, albeit controversially, to be considered a new artist at the Grammys, beating Breakfast Club, Cutting Crew, Swing Out Sister, and Terrence Trent Darby. Two years later, Jodi released her second album, Larger Than Life. It produced four singles, three of which, Real Love, Friends, and Everything became top 10 pop hits. Friends, featuring rappers Eric B. and Rakim, would get extra recognition for bridging the gap between genres as the first multi-format hit single to include the formula of a typical pop bass with a 16-bar rap. That formula would become so successful and such a staple in commercial pop music that it was added as a category at the Grammys under the Grammy Award for Best Rap Sung Collaboration in 2002. Unfortunately, Jody's next two projects, 1991's Affairs of the Heart and 1993's Intimacy, would not produce favorable results. During this period, she would marry bassist, singer, songwriter, and record producer Andre Simone. Not only had they been dating for several years at this point, but he'd also served as producer on her first four albums. They would go on to have one son, Ari, before divorcing four years later. It was now time for Jody to take a different approach to her career. She parted ways with MCA and started her own label. The first project she'd release on it would be her fifth album, titled Affection, in 1995. The title track didn't crack the Hot 100, but it did become a moderate R&B hit. The following year, Shalimar was back, but not in the traditional sense. Jody appeared on the platinum-selling remake of her former group's original hit, this is for the lover in you with Babyface. The song also features her former Shalimar bandmates, Howard Hewitt and Jeffrey Daniel, as well as rapper LL Cool J. Soon after, Jody took a hiatus from her own label and signed with Big Beat Records. After spending most of 1997 in the recording studio crafting her next album, Jody was back in the new year with its lead singles, Off the Hook and If I'm Not in Love. Propelled by remixes, the former track reached the top of the dance chart making it her first number one hit in nearly a decade. This achievement should have made Jody extra excited to release her album, but more industry drama would put a wrench in those plans. Big Beat Records became absorbed into its parent label, Atlantic, and they in turn ended up shelving Jody's album from a US release and left her in legal limbo for two years. The album, titled Flower, was eventually released in Canada, the UK, and Japan. Jody moved forward by reactivating her independent label and releasing another three albums, 1999's The Saturday Night Experience Volume 1, 2001's Midnight Lounge, and 2006's The Makeover. In 2014, Jody made the successful move to become the legal and registered trademark owner of Shalimar. She felt compelled to pursue ownership after Howard and Jeffrey reincarnated the group with another member while using Jody's likeness on promotional materials. She wasn't having that and decided to do something about it. She wouldn't get it done without a fight though. Dick Griffey's wife argued that her husband never forfeited ownership of the group and promised she'd fight Jody in court. Jody came out victorious in the end, retaining ownership of the Shalimar trademark in the US while Dick Griffey's wife and daughter own all Shalimar licensing across Europe. Later, Jody would add the term reloaded as a way to make sure the public knew that the Shalimar she was now a part of was not a reunion with past members, but a rebrand. The reloaded version of the group features her, plus renowned choreographer, Rosero McCoy, and Ohio native singer, Nate Allen Smith. So far, the new trio has released a couple of new singles. In 2017, Shalimar Reloaded changed their name and all social media to a simple moniker of SRL. Jody then rebranded her music collective once again to Jody Watley and SRL, an acronym for Soul Revolution Love. Over the last 15 years or so, since her last studio album was released, Jody's put out several EPs, the last of which dropped in 2021. 
In March 2023, Jodi launched her new Sirius XM show, simply called The Jodi Watley Show. It airs on the second Sunday of each month on the Groove Channel and sports the tagline, wattage vibes rooted in music. She told Billboard.com, I look forward to bringing the wattage and my own style to listeners, fully packed with the best of classic to contemporary R&B music and engaging conversations with surprise guests.